my train of thought with that is I just, I find you get so much more bang for your buck and, um, uh, and it just stands out. You get more of an effect with an uplight than you will with a path and garden light. And I find so many first timers, do it yourselfers, landscapers who don't do a lot of lighting. Um, they just throw a bunch of path lights and it's like they're trying to uh, land a plane. Whereas if you're strategic with them, I think it can be a good fit, but I think you always get more value out of a, an uplight. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you wanna see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's gonna look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. Hey, Eric, uh, thanks again for your email and your pictures. Um, yeah, I'll give you a couple ideas and where you should um, use some of the lights. Um, we don't sell the tree rings, but I will give you another option that we use a lot of the time um, for lighting the front facade of the house. I, you know, sometimes we use wash lights, but not very often because I find that it just the effect is not quite as good as it should be, especially on a section like this. But I will show you some areas where you could use that wash light. But if I was to look at lighting uh, the front of the house, I mean, the first thing I would do is I would have um, I would just use some standard up lights like this. The only difference is on the left side of the house where it's a little bit taller and you have that second story. Um, these comes on, come with a four watt LED lamp. Uh, which they'll refer to as a 20 watt halogen equivalent uh, in brightness but for those second story uh, where it's a little bit higher you want to upgrade to a 35 watt equivalent which is a 5 watt led a little brighter it's going to push that light a little bit higher and i like using this and what i see so many people do is um, they'll bring that light too far back and they shine it at the house whereas you're almost 100 percent of the time better to bring it you know, 12 to 18 inches back and having it shine more upright. And that's where you're going to get more of the subtleties and really kind of wash the facade with a regular up light. But now you're going to get that light up here as well. Whereas with a wash light, it's just, you're only going to cover maybe this bottom section. Um, so I would have three of those across here to highlight this front section of the house. Um, I'm not too sure what's on the, uh, on the sides over here, but I mean, even if you could get some of those same lights, those little bit brighter ones that are kind of like this angling to the peak would be a good option. Uh, one thing I would do though with those, I would add something called a hex baffle. Basically what a hex baffle is, it's a little uh, glare shield that fits over the lamp uh, and all it does is it helps deflect some of that side glare so that as you're walking by uh, those lights, you don't have them shining directly in your eyes. So that's what I would do. And then with that same light, I would try and probably get one kind of underneath this window back here, same idea having it shine more upright so that whole front facade is lit up. And then I would do that same theme over here, um, but I wouldn't use that super bright one. I would just use, and not that it's super bright, but the five watt LED for this area, I would just go with the uh, standard four watt LED. And I think what I would do here, which would look good, uh, is I would actually have like four of them. So I would kind of have one here. I would kind of have one here. I would kind of have one here and I would kind of have one here. And the reason being is because I want to try and backlight this section too, so that I kind of have the silhouette of this in front a little bit. And then this is where I would use some wash lights on some of the smaller stuff. So uh, wash lights are great on any lower line shrubs. So what you could do is I'd probably use, and sorry, I'll just show you um, kind of more what a wash light is, is like this, right? It's just wider angle, a uh, softer light, great for anything that's kind of under six feet and a little bit wider. So that's where I would probably try and put one, you know, if I have an up light here, I might try and there's two trains of thoughts here. If you have a walkway, what, um, a lot of people will do is they'll just put some path lights. And what I like to do is kind of stagger them in between where I have my up lights. So maybe you have four path lights across here that help light the walkway and then I would try and get a wash light kind of on this guy here because this is something that really stands out um, and you really want to make it pop and you might even want to consider putting two so that it really rounds out the viewing angle all the way across the um, the front here so um, that would be a good option the other thing sometimes I like doing is just putting some wash lights on these instead of using path lights so I'd maybe have a wash light here that kind of highlights these guys I might have one over on the corner and then maybe another one over here and then I would have a wash light on this one and my train of thought with that is I just I find you get so much more bang for your buck and um, 
uh, and it just stands out. You get more of an effect with an uplight than you will with a path and garden light. And I find so many first timers, do it yourselfers, landscapers who don't do a lot of lighting, um, they just throw a bunch of path lights and it's like they're trying to uh, land a plane. Whereas if you're strategic with them, I think it can be a good fit, but I think you always get more value out of a, an uplight. And this would be another one where a wash light would be a good example. Um, it's not going to be super bright on this tree, but you don't need it because you're really going to be highlighting the house. And then this just puts some subtle light on the front. And then for these guys, this is the same thing where I would use those brighter, um, those brighter 35 watt, even though, uh, it's quite a bit higher here. You could even, um, and I think if you use two of them, it wouldn't even hurt to go to a, um, a 50 watt equivalent, which is about a six watt led lamp in these. Uh, and reason being, again, I'd probably have like two of them that just shine up kind of at two angles and really push that light up here. And the way I like to go and mount those ones is instead of the tree rings, um, which are good as well. Um, I just find these are super easy. And the reason I like these, um, tree mounts that we have is that, uh, they're pretty handy because they just screw right into the tree, uh, very easily like so. And then the fixture just screws into there. But what I like about them is now as that tree grows, all you have to do is you just have to back this off. There's like a little hole here and you put a screwdriver in and you just spin this off a little bit. So as that tree grows a little bit further out, you can just keep unscrewing this a little bit more so that it doesn't eventually grow around the tree. Whereas with those tree rings, they work great, but you have to make sure that you're, um, you're always unscrewing those as well. And it's a little bit more work, whereas this is just a very simple way of doing it. So, um, yeah, I think that's kind of what I would do, Eric. If you have any other questions, let me know. Um, you can play around on the website, uh, putting together a kit. Uh, if you want us to customize something, we can definitely do that as well. And if you have any other questions, please just uh, reach out again. Thanks. Hey guys, just uh, another cool example. If you can see this top peak here, where we used a couple gutter mounts and just focused them in uh, on that top peak, um, really turns out second story peaks. Definitely something you want to focus on if you can get the lights up there. Uh, definitely brings your landscape lighting plan to the next level. Hey guys, so we'll take a quick look at the cottage here. Um, and, you know, nighttime pictures never quite do it justice. I think the only thing we're missing that I would add here is on the front porch, we're going to put a little down light there to highlight it. But I think the uh, light in the two sides of the windows was nice, create some symmetry. We're just missing a little bit of a dark spot in the middle there. And then as we kind of go around the side, um, we only use six lights on this guy, uh, which is nice. But we just kind of highlight it again around the side here. Uh, just to give a little bit and as it gets darker um, you really be able to see the subtleties um, in the light a little bit higher up is just tough to see right now and then again by the entrance uh, we did the same thing over on on this side um, and I think everything turned out really nice um, very subtle lighting but just enough to make it pop so that you can kind of see it from a distance and then we'll show you um, the driveway here again as we get um, a little bit better light as it gets a little bit darker here. So I'll just share with you guys one little trick, um, something called a hex baffle. Uh, where we use these is just to deflect the glare off the uplight. So sometimes if you have an uplight like this, that's close to an area where people are going to be walking, um, it's not necessarily going to be pointing in their in their face or in their eyes or anything, but just to help keep that light a little bit more concentrated when they're looking at it from an angle, we're going to use something called a hex baffle. It basically just slides underneath the cap of your light and goes over the lens or sorry over the light and under the lens and snaps back on um, and then all that's going to do is just deflect the light that's being uh, maybe portrayed that way so that somebody looking down they're not going to see a light shining right up in there in your eyes so this is a great uh, a great little tip to use anytime you have a high traffic area where people might be walking by the light so they're not shining directly into their eyes. So how did we go and settle with, uh, with this light as our primary light? It's not the only one we use, but um, this is the RS uplighting fixture from FX Luminaire. FX Luminaire is um, it's one of the leading brands in landscape lighting. Uh, they're owned by Hunter Industries, which is probably one of the largest, if not the largest residential uh, irrigation manufacturer in the world. Um, and they bought 
uh, FX Luminaire. It's been over 10 years ago now, and what they've really done is they've brought their customer service, um, their quality, and all that into their fixtures. Now, one of the things that I will say about this fixture um, is it comes with a five-year warranty, but the thing that I know from installing landscape lights over the years is I don't even really worry too much about warranty. One of the reasons I like Hunter and I like FX Luminaires, I know if I have an issue with this, even if it's 10 years down the road, usually they don't ask any questions, but it's so rare that I have to. So when they say they give you a five-year warranty, it's an actual warranty. It's not some BS lifetime warranty like you see all these cheap brands will give you. And I know they're BS because I know where they come from. Well, I've got crates sitting right behind this camera here of different samples from all kinds of different manufacturers overseas, in the US, in Canada, and it's all the same fixture. And some give lifetime warranties, some give seven year warranties. And I know that a lot of that is just BS because a lifetime warranty nowadays, if you uh, don't agree with me, doesn't even make sense because what are the chances that that same company is still going to be operating even 10 years down the road? So to give any kind of lifetime warranty, I don't know, in my opinion, it's just a bunch of BS, unless it's one of those brands and those companies that you just know is going to build something. They've been around for a long time. They ain't going anywhere. But I'll tell you the lights that you're going to find on Amazon and online that offer you a lifetime warranty. Um, it's a bunch of BS. I've seen it. I replace them all the time. Good luck trying to get it. And even if you do, it doesn't matter if you keep replacing crap with crap. What's your time worth to have to keep replacing that stuff? So that's why we've gone out. We've sourced out uh, the RS Uplight, and I'll show you a couple features why we like this light. Um, one is super heavy duty. We have a, I've got another Uplight here that we use that, again, we've sorted through a whole bunch of different ones. This is a, what I'll call a economy brand, very similar to a lot of the stuff you'll find on Amazon and that kind of stuff. Um, and, but the difference we went with this one and why we still use this in some operations, somebody's maybe a little more budget conscious, Maybe they're looking to move in a couple years so they don't want to spend too much money. Um, but I like this fixture as opposed to a lot of them because of some features that I will get into. Um, but it's still not going to be the same as a light like this. This one easily weighs twice what that one weighs just because there's more material. Um, it's an aluminum zinc combo which is super durable. So whenever I get those emails from people in Florida or on the coast or anything that are worried about is this light going to stand up, I know that this one will stand up better than most other lights out there. And there's really good lights on the market, especially down in Florida and stuff that they sell. Um, but I also know that you guys don't wanna pay $500 for a fixture, and that's how we came up with this one, is for the 89, 99 bucks that you're gonna pay for this US, there is not a better value fixture out there. Um, and you just have to feel it and you'll know. Um, that's why we offer our try before you buy lights. You can actually buy this as a trial light um, where you get it, it comes with a battery pack. You can just plug in, go test it out. But it gives you a chance to really feel and see what it's like. So um, that's one of the things is just weight and durability is really good. Um, I like these ones as opposed to a lot of the integrated fixtures that are on there. So an integrated fixture, all that is is the difference is you're going to find two kinds of lights. You're going to find some that have like a, a drop-in bulb like this or that have a built-in LED board, especially if you're buying a cheaper fixture. Um, you want to stay away from the LED boards because most of those are crap and you can't just replace the bulb You have to replace the whole fixture, which is a pain in the butt. There's some really good uh, Integrated fixtures on the market. Just the price point goes up a lot. Those ones will last you a long time But it just depends what you want to pay for uh, what you're gonna get extra The reason that I like this one especially for most of your do-it-yourselfers um, Irrigation contractors landscapers who are just getting started out uh, the reason I like this one is because if you haven't done a lot of lights, sometimes you don't know how bright of a light should I use on a certain feature. Well, if you buy an integrated fixture, you can't change that. You pretty much have to know ahead of time how bright you need that light, or you're going to have to go rewire another light in to replace it. These ones, the reason I like it is because if I need a brighter light, I can just go and swap it out. Um, the other thing I like about this too is as your landscape grows, say you start with a tree. Uh, we have a couple in our yard that we just planted a few years ago. They're maybe eight feet tall um, that we had some uh, some of these uh, standard four watt lamps in. It was a little too bright so all we did um, because you can get standard filters that will fit most of these. We covered it up with a frosted lens made it a little bit softer 
as that tree grew, we needed it to be a little bit brighter. We took off the frosted filter. And now as that tree goes to be 20 feet, 25 feet taller, what we can do is we can just go swap out the bulb for something brighter. So I love that as an option, especially for all the do-it-yourselfers. Um, and again, if you're buying any kind of fixture that's a little bit less money, you wanna have that option so that you don't have to go rewire those lights because if you're anything like me, um, it's just, it's not fun having to go dig up lights in your own property and have to replace those when you could very easily just go and replace it uh, with another lamp. So that's one of the reasons I like this one. You'll see this orange ring here. This is a rubber seal um, that really helps keep the, the water and the moisture out. Uh, this is also this glass and the lens in here is all silicone. So again, makes it super watertight, but easy enough if you need to go and adjust that bulb or anything like that. So I like that about it. Um, super easy to adjust. Um, the other thing I like is there's no tiny little, you know, even on this one, yes, this is a, a, a good fixture, but it's still got this little Allen key piece here that to secure the, um, the top of the fixture on, you gotta mess around with that. It's a pain in the butt when it's been there for a while and it gets covered in dirt and all that kind of stuff. This one, you basically just kind of twist it off, um, but you'll see again, if you get the trial light, um, how well that actually sits on there and it's super easy and super watertight. Because of that water seal, I know I get heck for this all the time, but a lot of times we actually use these in downlighting applications because I know how good that seal is and it's so rare that we have issues with that. So another reason, um, super easy, adjustable set screw, just a regular Phillips screwdriver and you can loosen that off and you can adjust this however you need to be. I like that. Um, the other thing I like on these ones, which you will not get on the cheaper fixtures, is there's a 10 foot lead wire on it. Um, and why that's a big deal, again, for the do-it-yourselfers, if you don't know exactly where that light is gonna fit, by having a longer lead wire, now you can wire that in and it gives you tons of room to be able to move that light without having to go and rewire or mess with anything. The same thing as your landscape grows, maybe you need to move that light back further. Well, now you don't have this short little three foot lead wire where you can only move it back a little bit. You can go and, and move that light for years and years and years. So that's actually a, a really um, big deal, having that uh, 10 foot lead wire on it as well. Um, the other thing I like it like about it is FX Luminaire probably makes some of the most durable ground stakes that we've used. Um, a lot of the cheap ones, especially at like Home Depot and Lowe's and all those places um, are very cheap and they break all the time. Uh, you'd be amazed how many requests we get uh, for people who just need to replace a stake or I have to go out and repair and all it is is this, the stake just broke because they're cheap pieces of garbage. Um, the other reason I like this one is because it's got this slot here, uh, which is nice because now you can actually go pound this in the ground and then you can just slide your light in and out of there um, without having to feed it through the hole. Some of the other ground stakes don't have that and you have to feed the wire in first. And why that's tough is because now when you gotta go pound that into the ground, well, it's tough to do when you got a wire sticking out because now if you hit it too hard, you're gonna break that wire and then basically your fixture is screwed. So that doesn't seem like a big deal, um, but it actually is. And it's a nice big uh, eight inch ground stake. So it's nice and deep. It'll hold that light nice and secure. Um, so again, it's all these little things uh, that make a difference with this light. The other thing too, and a question I get asked all the time is about mounting it. If you wanna mount it um, to a house, a barbecue area, anything like that. Um, you'll notice on uh, the threads here, this is pretty much a standard half inch thread. So if you go to the electrical aisle at almost um, you know any home improvement store, you'll find all kinds of different mounting brackets like this. There's smaller ones. There's some that are like this that have like two holes. So if you wanted to mount two of them, um, but that basically just uh, screws right into there. And I would do it here, but um, I have to feed the wire through, which is not a big deal. But again, that's, that's why I like these ground stakes because if you don't have that little slot there, well, then you got to do this and you got to feed this whole wire through the whole 10 feet. And then you got to screw that fixture in. But um, the point is it's a half inch thread. So you can literally go and buy any kind of mounting bracket, any kind of riser if you need to rise it up that has a half inch female thread to screw that into and you're good to go. Um, sometimes when we need to put those on a riser and need them a little higher, that's what we'll do. We'll go get a, a half inch female thread, screw it onto here, half inch riser, and then uh, we just screw it into the ground stake 
and boom, we can get that above our plant. So, so many good things that you can do with this. Um, the other thing about this light is uh, FX Luminaire also makes um, some of the uh, most efficient uh, landscape lighting lamps that are out there and, and why I can actually say that as opposed to just you know feeding you guys a bunch of BS is if you um, if you get some of their fixtures and you can look at any ones the cheaper ones you usually won't find this but there's something usually on the box there's their um, their wattage and then there's something called their VA so you'll notice that it might be a four watt lamp but the cheaper the light is the less efficient is and their VA in a lot of cases could be like 7.4 which means that it's actually using 7.4 watts as opposed to the four, watt, four watts that it says. Whereas a lamp like this is a four watt lamp and the VA on it is 4.2. So it's extremely efficient. And why that's important too is when you're sizing your transformer because if you have um, 10 lights that are four watts each, well that's 40 watts. In this case, it's only 42 watts. But if you're using a cheaper one, uh, that's at 7.4, well you're at seven, uh, 74, 75 watts, which if you only bought like a 60 watt transformer, well now you're hooped because those lights aren't going to work. And I get that call all the time when people can't get their lights to work is because they've gone and they've bought a inferior product and it's just, it's not as efficient. So FX definitely has uh, some of the uh, most efficient lamps on the market by far that can easily go in and out. Um, you can get these in different brightnesses. You can get them in different, um, uh, beam spreads, angles, uh, different things like that. You can even get different colors. You can get uh, which are warm white, 2700 Kelvin, which is kind of the standard, but you can get them a little bit whiter than that as well. So, um, but the nice thing, if you don't like the way it looks, you can just go get a different lamp and you can pop it in here. Um, and it'll still work with most other brands of lamps, but for, for what you get, it's you're not gonna find anything uh, better than this. And trust me, we've looked for years so um, that is our staple light and the other thing that I do like about it that's coming um, I always get asked in the holidays can I change the the lights colors and stuff and yes there's some systems out there um, that you can do that but they're very expensive uh, what's going to be really cool is with this one uh, we've been testing for years but a lot of the color changing bulbs that we've seen are not very good. Um, they're not very compatible. They don't work well with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, but we've got a couple now that we're actually testing um, that are looking very promising. If those come into effect, what's cool is now at the holidays, um, and I wouldn't do it all year round because these are still gonna be more efficient. They're still gonna run better. They're gonna last longer than the color changing ones for sure. But in the holidays, what you could do is you could just go swap out this bulb for one of the color changing ones that are uh, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi operated, change the colors to whatever you need to, and then uh, and then you're all set. Uh, whereas right now what we do is we'll typically just put like a color lens on there, whether it be a green one, a red one, something like that for the holidays. The only thing you gotta remember, whether it's Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or a color lens, is when you add color, it makes it less bright. So you usually have to bump up the intensity somehow. So if we're putting a lens, we'll usually go just pop in again, just pop in a brighter bulb, or if you're using a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi option, you just gotta set the setting a little bit higher. But um, so many things you can do. The most versatile light on the market, FX Luminaire's RS LED Uplight uh, now comes with the drop-in bulb, but you can go and swap that out for whatever you need. Uh, favorite light by far, you can get it with our Try It Before You Buy It light, so you can actually test it out, see how it's gonna look, feel it. And if you, as always, if you guys have questions, Email me, cal at lightingdoctor.ca, or go check out all our videos on YouTube, and be sure to subscribe so you get more of these uh, reviews to find out what's gonna be the best lights for your project. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys got some great do-it-yourself landscape lighting tips. Now, please be sure to go to our website at lightingdoctor.ca and check out our how-to page. It's full of great resources from our podcast to our video to our most frequently asked questions. And also check out our Try It Before You Buy It light where you can actually go now and get one of our premium quality up lights and a King Innovation Instalight, which is basically a battery pack now that allows you to go and run those lights and test them out on your pop property. Try it for 14 days. If you don't love it, send it back to us and we'll give you a full refund. And if not, you keep the light at a discounted rate and go and buy what you need for your project. So thanks again for watching. Please be sure to leave us a comment. We love your feedback and have a great day.